Hey guys, uh, I actually gave this video some bit of thought. I initially just wanted to show a couple of numbers, just how the uh, Cinebench R23 works on the AMD Ryzen 5000 series. But I thought, why just post random numbers? Why not compare it to something famous, something that in general everyone knows about, uh, which is performance good? And it boasts it quite well. So I know this might look a little crazy, but right here I have the MacBook M1. I know. Why? Why am I doing this? Well, think about it. Both have eight cores. Both are clocked the same way, 3 gigahertz, 3.2, like that. And the only difference is the MacBook M1 does not have hyper-threading. And yeah, I'm not connecting it to the power supply because I did try with and without the results on the Cinebench R23 on the MacBook M1 were the same. So how does it compare to this? How much better will the AMD Ryzen 7 5000 series be to the MacBook? Now we can see right away, hyper-threading will beat octa-core without hyper-threading. So yes, obviously the AMD beats like points, points away. And yes, I did do two kinds of uh, benching on the AMD Ryzen 5000. One with extreme battery saving and one with clocked to full, like custom clocking. Uh, the fans are ramping up at full speed. So you can see, yeah, it's almost finished the complete render out of Cinebench R23. Well, there's the MacBook is still, uh, well, it's still, see, it's done now. So now pausing this, I'll stop this for now. Now one result did kind of surprise me is the single core performance on the Ryzen 5000 series connected to the power supply. The MacBook M1 actually won this round of battle by a small number, about 50, but it did win. So how you look at these numbers, you could decide how you would grade the processor. I think the AMD Ryzen 7 5000 series is really good because on the battery saver alone, it was able to come really close to its full performance of the M1 chip. So yeah, uh, I'll be making